Hello, this is Linda Vetris Nichols, and do I have an amazing person to introduce to you, Brian Grossman. Welcome, Brian. Thank you very much. How are you this morning? Thank you for taking the time for this interview. Absolutely. I'm excited. Simple concepts create change. Whoa, I love it. So tell us a little bit about your story of transformation, Ryan. So I've had, luckily or unluckily, depending upon how people will look at this or mm -hmm. listen to this, um, I started out a uh, great family, middle class upbringing, thank God didn't want for anything. And when I was 10, got diagnosed with a neuromuscular disorder. And Ooh. so I learned early on what it's like to be different. So my disorder couldn't be seen. It was called myasthenia gravis, fatigue of the muscles, droopy eyelids. Uh -huh. And uh, when I was in seventh grade, you know, the rule in our education and our family was education, education, education. If we didn't think we wanted to take over my dad's business, which was a uh, pleading and embroidery factory. And I thought I was going to be president of that till I worked down there every summer, but I was getting an F in math and my next door neighbor who I was very good friends with my parents talked to his parents and I got to go to a private school, eighth grade through 12th grade because F's were unacceptable, but I just couldn't concentrate. And through that, I joined a charity organization the Muscular Dystrophy Association, and the subgroup of that was the Myasthenia Gravis Foundation. Ah. And when I was 16, got asked to speak in front of 1,200 people to ah. help raise money for the organization, and it was the women's chapter. And wow, um, I was nervous and scared, but that taught me, wow, I'm going to be a public speaker, but what it allowed me to do to transform was share my story of what it's like to have muscle fatigue, yeah. can't play sports for more than 10 minutes at a time and not be able to fit in one, just among teenagers, but two, in a small school where if you're not the athlete, nerds weren't in vogue back then. <laughs> so right? you had to stand out. So I became student body vice president. I was uh, the wow. lead in two plays in high school. Um and so I just learned to speak up and talk and voice my opinion. And then I got very lucky when I was 18, uh, saw a specialist who came from Maryland to the USC uh, muscular dystrophy clinic, and it was gone. He thought I got, quote, misdiagnosed maybe, but it just left oh. my system. I've been cool. fine ever since. But what that yeah. taught me is, how do you look at things differently? Yeah. Question everything. Be assertive with doctors. Um, not be mean. Right. So listen. And then through my own, I don't know, bad habits, emotional angst, uh after grad school, gosh, um, right when I was having in my first marriage some marital trouble and then ended up divorcing from that marriage I, I was doing public speaking I was doing business training seminars and I just didn't realize it and I'm sure everybody watching this will agree you know good looking guy but from the neck down I went from uh, 510 and 170 pounds to 510 over a period of years to 380. Wow. 2011 I had lap band surgery which is the minor weight loss surgery because the bands were movable, tight and mm -hmm. loose, tight and loose, and lost the weight, can gain the weight back through bad habits. And that's what I did. Yeah. Then uh, working at a maximum security prison as a psychologist, again, my fault, bad habits, overeating emotionally, not talking to people about how stressed out I was. And the first time in my life, I always get nervous going to the doctor. You go in, the nurse takes your blood pressure. I say, you know, come back in five minutes. I'll be calm and relaxed. Take it again. The nurse came in and took my blood pressure, came in again, took it. And the doctor walked in in 10 seconds and cool. looked right at me. Now I'm nerdy. I have lots of hobbies, but I don't fool around. So he looked right at me. He says, are you having an affair? And I said, what are you talking about? Oh, he says, are you selling drugs to inmates or doing something illegal? Oh, said, no. <laughs> 
And I'm like, wow. what is going on? And he said, I don't think you get it. Your blood pressure's tripled. Ooh. You're going to stroke out and you have type two diabetes. Oh You're not leaving the office until you tell me what's going on and you commit to some massive change. And yeah. I had talked to him about the weight loss surgery again because I had contacted my previous surgeon and he said, oh, we're going to make you jump through the insurance hoops and do it. And so I did it in 2017 gastric sleeve. I've kept 150 pounds off and it's all up here. And now not all up here. What's great about the weight loss surgery is medication, and it's phenomenal. You wake up, you know, 90% of people wake up from the surgery, better attitude, energized, excited. They don't know all the neurochemistry yet about that, but it's just remarkable how that happens. And right. so that's where I'm at. And I'm on a mission to help people not gain the weight back. And if you haven't had weight loss surgery, Right. And you want to stop yo-yo dieting, I also help with that. And that's what I'm most excited about. Pardon me. Uh, excited about. I love it. That is quite the story. Very nice. So nice to hear about your story of transformation. Thanks, Brian.